everybody, Kurt Zepp here. Today I want to make a quick video on auto guiding. Now, if you're new to astrophotography, you're probably going to realize eventually you're going to need to auto guide. So, what auto guiding is, is basically no matter how good your mount is at tracking, if you take a long enough exposure, your mount may go off just a little bit and your camera can pick it up. Your stars are gonna start looking football shape, oval shape. So you use a separate camera and it focuses in on a star. And when it detects your mount is going off, it'll send a command down to your mount to correct it. So that's what it is in a nutshell. There's tons of good videos on the internet that explain that. So I don't really wanna dwell on that. I just wanna show you what, what I do in my solutions. So. There are four main methods of auto guiding, actually two main methods, and there's two other additional methods that I didn't know about until I started doing some research recently. So the first method and the easiest method is by using a separate guide scope, like what I have here and up here, and a camera, a separate guide camera. That's the number one easiest method to use, and it's really good for beginners. I highly recommend it. The second method is where you use what's called an off-axis guider. And let me show you what that looks like. So an off-axis guider looks something like this. This is not an off-axis guider. This is a centering device, but it's similar to an off-axis guider in that the off-axis guider has a prism that it comes down a shaft here and you attach your camera to this thing and you stick it between the your main imaging camera and your, your telescope and that prism captures some of the light beams and moves it up to the guide camera so that has some advantages which i'm going to go through in a couple of seconds or a couple of minutes the third method, which I didn't know about until recently, was a camera, some cameras, or some of the older cameras, CCD cameras, they had two sensors on it, one for imaging and another one for auto guiding. So I didn't know about that until recently. And there's actually another type of a camera, so this is the fourth method, which has, it has a number of pixels that are also used for auto guiding. So it has one sensor, but some of the pixels are used for auto guiding. So I didn't know about those methods. Okay, now let me just say a couple words about what guiding depends on. Guiding depends on your mount. It also depends on the focal length of your imaging telescope or camera lens, whatever you're using. And it also depends on your guide scope focal length if you're using a guide scope. And it also depends on the length of your exposure. If you're doing short exposures, and you have a really short focal length, you're not gonna to need to do guiding. The longer the focal length and the longer exposure, the more you're gonna need guiding, okay? So various methods have their advantages. And let me just go through the advantages and disadvantages, and then I'll go through what I do for auto guiding. All right, I'm gonna say this up front. Probably the best method for auto guiding is using the off-axis guider. and why am I not using the off-axis guider? Uh, I'll, I'll get into that when I go through my uh, discussion of what I'm doing. But the reason the off-axis guider is probably the best is because you're using the actual focal length of the imaging telescope. In fact, you're using the imaging telescope for guiding. So any deviation that your mount would make, it's gonna be detected um, presumably by your off-axis guiding camera and it can send a command. So that's one advantage of the off, that's the best advantage of the off-axis guider. The other advantage is because you don't have a separate telescope, you're probably uh, gonna have less weight. Another advantage of the off-axis guider is you eliminate what's called flexure. And flexure is if you have a guide scope and an imaging camera, they're, if, if, you, if it's not a super rigid system, there may be a little play in the in your system so your guider may think it's your, your guider may be guiding really well and you're getting good numbers on guiding but it's your stars may still be rounded and that's the flexure because the the imaging camera isn't moving exactly the same as your guide cam as your guiding system 
So those are some of the big advantages of the off-axis guider. So what are some disadvantages of the off-axis guider? Well, for one thing, you your off-axis guider, you have to focus it the same as you focus your imaging camera, that it also focuses the off-axis guider camera. So they're on the same uh, plane, if you will. So that's one big thing. Another thing is that if your camera sensor is picking up an image, the prism from the off-axis guider may interfere with that image. So you might have to adjust your off-axis guider, otherwise you might have a shadow. One other thing about the off-axis guider is the prism picks up a, a much smaller uh, field of view. Therefore, if you're trying to image on a, an oddball object where there's not many stars, you may not pick up any stars because it's, it's such a small, narrowed field of view, especially if you're using a long focal length telescope. For example, uh, you can rectify that though. This, this camera right here that I'm using for off-axis guiding, it's the ASI 120. It's a standard, really good, decent off-axis guiding camera but it's got a very small sensor. And if I put that with off axis guiding, your field of view would be very, very narrowed. So I would not recommend this, tells, this camera for off axis guiding. You'd wanna get one with a bigger sensor. And the best one to use that I can think of is the ASI-174. It has a huge sensor. I think it's uh, 16 millimeters diagonal. So that, that, it'll give you a big field of view that you would you, you'd want to use that for your off-axis guider so you can pick up some stars. Oh, one other thing, it's going to make your back end uh, more bottom heavy. So you might have to add some more counterweights on the front end. So some of the advantage of not using a guide scope because of the weight factor, might, you're still going to have to add more weight to the counteract it. But again, it's not, not that bad. And most focusers should be able to handle the extra weight. Now, some of those problems I just mentioned, if you're a seasoned astrophotographer, you'd recognize it instantly and be able to fix it. But if you're brand new to astrophotography, you might be going, I don't understand what's going on. So that's one of the reasons why I would not recommend off-axis guiding if you're brand new to astrophotography. The people I know that are doing it are seasoned astrophotographers. Okay, so what am I using for guide scopes here? So this is my ZWO. 30 millimeter aperture, 120 millimeter focal length, F4 guide scope. It's a mini guide scope, and I love it. This thing's great. It has a has a helical uh, focuser on it, so you can focus in on the stars. And I use this with my ASI 120 millimeter camera, and I use it particularly with my 200 millimeter Canon camera lens. Now, the conventional wisdom for guide scopes is, or it used to be, you want to have your guide scope at least one fourth your focal length of your imaging lens or telescope. These days, it can go up to one tenth of your focal length. But whatever it is, I, I, I don't you go, I don't use this for anything else other than this. I do know people that have used this system on a Hyperstar as well as other 600 millimeter, 700 millimeter focal length telescopes with really good guiding. But I, I don't use it for that. I use other uh, guide scopes for that. Okay, moving up the ladder here. This is my Agena 50 millimeter aperture, 162 millimeter focal length. It's F 3.2 guide scope and it's a helical, it has a helical focuser on it. And it's really a nice auto guiding telescope. I've been really, really, really happy with this. The stars on it are really good too. It's 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 a higher quality. Well, for guide scopes, it's a seems like it's a fairly high quality lens. And I've had this for a long time. I think I've had this for five years now, and it's been a uh, really good guide scope. Good guide scope. <laughs> and I use this with my with the ZWO one twenty. And I mainly use this nowadays, I, I've used it for the Hyperstar, but I have used it in the past on my Orion ED80 telescope, which was a 600 millimeter focal length uh, telescope. So really good guide scope, I highly recommend this. I have seen in the specs that this can go up to 1500 focal length systems, it can guide up to 1500, but I wouldn't use this for anything more than 800 uh, millimeter focal length. 
let's go take a look at what else I'm using. Okay, so I'm outside right now in my shed and I'm showing you my third guide scope here. This is the ZWO 60 millimeter aperture, 280 millimeter focal length guide scope. And it has a helical focuser, but it's not a, um, not a good one. <laughs> uh, it's a, it, it, when you rotate it, it rotates the whole image uh, while it's trying to focus. So that I don't really like too much. The optics are okay. I'm getting nice, tight, round stars when, when I do focus on it. So, so that's good. But I don't know if I recommend this one. I, I think I'd rather, I like the other Agena better. I don't even think they make this anymore. I think it was discontinued. But I got one, and I, and I use it for my 844 millimeter focal length uh, AT115 refractor. Well, let's take a look at my last guide scope. Okay, folks. Well, here's my last setup. This is my Orion short, to short tube 80 millimeter, 400 millimeter focal length guide scope. It happens to be my oldest guide scope, believe it or not. I also, I used to use this with my Orion ED80, which was an, also an 80 millimeter uh, telescope, but it was 600 uh, focal length. So it's kind of interesting. I had a same size aperture for guide scope and uh, imaging scope, but it worked well. I ended up uh, getting or using the Agena though afterwards because this was, it was kind of goofy looking, I, I thought. But um, I, I was getting good guiding with this thing, I, got, I must admit. And I had forgotten how good this thing was as a guide scope until I started using it again with the Celestron Edge HD 800 here. What a pleasure it was. And what I'm saying what a pleasure it was, although the helicoil focusers are good, this thing has the old uh, rack and pinion series. And, 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 God, I, I can't... I, can't believe how good this was. I, I focus it and it's so easy to focus and get to get those nice tight stars. It, it was just such a pleasure and it has a great big field of view, even with the ASI 120 camera. Nice big field of view. You'll have no trouble finding stars with this uh, guide scope. It also happens to be part of Orion's uh, awesome auto guider package. They sell this with a with a camera and uh, some rings and they call it their auto guider package so and, and, I, and i can see why this is a good guide scope uh, for what it does when i've been using it i've used it numerous times now with this edge hd and it works well i get nice tight round stars using this thing now the numbers are good too they're 0.5 arc seconds in fact all my systems get 0.5 arc seconds even less at some sometimes but more importantly look at the stars themselves i mean the numbers are great but you know just really look at the stars if they're not tight and, and round then something's wrong even if the numbers the, the sometimes you're going to find that the numbers are saying it's great guiding but the stars are still not looking good that might be because your guide scope is or your guider is doing really well with guiding but you don't have the right matchup for your system for this Edge HD uh, at 2000, or I, I've got a focal resistor to make a 1400. Even so, at 1400 uh, millimeters focal length, and if I was using that, um, if I was using this mini guide scope, I don't know if it would be doing it really that well at all. I might, I might be getting good numbers with the guiding image with the uh, with this guide scope. They, they, that might be telling me I'm getting good guiding, but the stars may not be round. So that's what I mean by look at the numbers, but more importantly, look at the stars themselves. You can tell if they're not good. So, and one other benefit with this thing is this. Watch this with the if you have a nice set of uh, rings on here. So I was mentioning the balancing issue with this thing. If you just loosen this thing up, let's say you're top heavy or, or bottom heavy, you can just slide this thing up for balancing. Or let's say you're top heavy and you want to add more weight to the back end, you can just go down that. So you can use the off axis, the guide scope for, to help out in balancing. So that's another added benefit to using this thing. Okay, well, that's all I have for you for now. Well, for, well, for in conclusion, folks, I 
decided to make this auto guiding quadrant table and let's go through it. So let's say you're getting good auto guiding numbers, less than one arc second or even less than five. Your stars are nice and tight, they're round. I'd say all systems are good and my recommendation would be keep on doing what you're doing. Everything's great. Sounds like you got a good system. Let's say your auto guiding numbers are good. Again, less than one, maybe less than 0.5 arc seconds, but your stars are bloated and or they're oblong. That's an indication that your auto guiding system is working well, but it may not match with the imaging train that you have. The recommendation would be that you should get a larger guide scope or maybe you need an off-axis guider especially if you're above 2,000 millimeters focal length on your imaging scope. Let's say you're getting poor auto guiding numbers. Let's say more than one arc second per, per pixel, but the stars are tight and around. That's an indication that maybe your auto guiding system is good, but some setting somewhere might be not working well. And I would recommend checking your settings when it's convenient. If you're out there imaging, I wouldn't mess with it if, if it's a clear night. Keep, keep on going and when you, because your, your auto guiding is working well, I would just check it the next day or something like that. Now let's say you're getting really poor auto guiding numbers and your stars are bloated or oblong. That's an indication that your auto guiding system is not working and it may not match well with your imaging train and or your settings may be off. So if you've got something like that, I would check your settings ASAP and you still may need, if, the, if the, your systems, your settings are working really well, uh, you may still need a larger guide scope or you may need an off-axis guider at that point. Well, that's all I have for you folks. Hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time.